This episode is brought to you by P3 Recovery. We see the trophies, the goals, the celebrations on the podium, the moments that create sporting history. But what really is behind these moments? The backstory will take you into the life behind the athlete to really understand what's led them to success. up with both British and Japanese parents, Kai Sakakibara experienced life living in two countries, Australia and Japan. At age five, Kai started competing in BMX and was a national champion by the time he was just nine years old. Kai was in the prime of his career, a certainty to make the Olympic team and represent his country of Australia and his other home of Japan when tragedy struck. A near fatal crash whilst competing in the qualifying event for the Tokyo Olympics changed his life forever. Kai is an inspiration. He has an incredible spirit and fight, and I'm so grateful to Kai for sharing his story with us. Kai, thank you so much for having a conversation with me. That's all right. I want to talk about your childhood and what it was like growing up in a BMX mad family. (laughs) Yeah. Tell me about sort of you know, when you were younger Yeah, and... well, when I was younger, I was, I lived up in the Gold Coast mm-hmm. and I, we were only a few minutes drive away from Ashmore BMX track and, and therefore the Rang BMX track as well. So we mm-hmm. came and went before between those two clubs. So it was destiny for you. There was a track right Maybe, there. Maybe, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But no, I don't know. I just... Like I didn't have to do it, mm-hmm. but I just wanted to do it, yeah. and and that's what was so good. Uh, I think because yeah. just uh, yeah, I guess it is destiny. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. And you moved to 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 Japan when you were very young as a family. Yeah. Do you remember what that was like when you first arrived in Japan and that experience? I remember first off, I had to learn how to use top six. And that was really hard, um, but that was a, one of the first memories I have mm-hmm. of Japan. Yep. When, when did you start riding BMX in Japan? Uh, you were pretty young at that stage. Yeah, so I was still, I uh, only just moved over there when I, my parents found me a BMX tracks and I used to ride there all the time. Um, so we used to ride on a thing called Midori Yama Koen, which is um, uh, open maybe twice a month. Yep. And also Gorida Koen, which is open anytime. Okay. Yeah. And what else did you do when you were a child in Japan? Any other sports or hobbies? I used to love baseball. So, <laughs> so from when I was uh, first year in primary school, to fourth year in primary school. That's what I like to hit on. And also I was in the midfield, which is an important part of the game. And also the fourth batter, which is awesome. (laughs) So they obviously thought that you were going to be pretty good at baseball. Maybe, yeah, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I've chosen BMX. Yeah, exactly, yeah. (laughs) And tell me about, you were pretty young, but you were riding really well like you were you got a world uh, ranking as well over yeah. in Japan yeah How, can you remember anything about that um, so when I was still living in Japan um, the opportunity came up for us to go to Paris mm-hmm. um, in France um, to try and test ourselves against the world and it was pretty cool because I ended up getting coming back with a sixth place finish, which was really cool. Amazing. And how old were you? Eight. <laughs> Eight oh, and you were six, yeah. six in the world. Yeah. Wow, amazing. <laughs> so you were, you were really destined to, to Maybe. ride BMX. Yeah, maybe. And then uh, Saya, your sister, can you tell me about her and, and you guys as kids? 
Were you? Did you fight? Did you? Were you best friends? When, when, say, I started with BMX, I didn't see her continuing for very long at <laughs> all <laughs> because it's just she she liked it. Yep. But that was it. Like okay. she di didn't try to jump or manual or do anything. It just yep. she just rode around a couple of times and then <laughs> then went and played in the mud okay. basically. <laughs> but um, but now it's crazy how much he has de developed and especially last year when I wasn't at home or at all. She just continued to improve so much and. That's where I think she's made the difference yeah. today. Yeah. Were you were you competitive with each other when you were younger? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, <laughs> so when we were younger, we used to take take a st stopwatch for us to uh, try and beat our pa past times. Mm -hmm. And I remember my sister's times were getting a little bit a little bit too close to mine. <laughs> so I was just just press it a little bit slower so, yeah. so, it, so she doesn't beat me. Does she know this story now? Well, she will now, yeah. <laughs> now that she'll watch this yeah, story yeah. all those years ago. Yeah. So, so you, you spent some time in Japan and then you moved back to Australia yeah. and you lived in Sydney. Yeah. And things must have been pretty busy. You were riding BMX, you were going to school. Yeah. It must have been a busy life. Yeah, well, yes and no because what what a lot of people don't know about me is may, from maybe when I was 13 to when I was maybe 18 even, I had a, a pr few properly tough years. I didn't make any Australian championship okay. finals where as Saya made them all, okay. like it was a few challenging years but yeah, but I was lucky in having people like Saya, my parents, my coach at the time, Troy Fisher, mm -hmm. just supporting me all the way and um, and yeah, getting me getting me to where I am yeah. today. And you had those challenging years, but then you had amazing years in mm. 2017. I yeah. think it might have been was one of your the best years in terms of your career. Yeah. Can you tell well, me the highlights? Or? Yeah. Well. It was funny because um, when I when I when we came back to Australia in 2007, I went and won the Australian National Championships as an 11-year-old <laughs> boy. <laughs> so um, young. Yeah, and then um, then ten ten years later, um, I won it again in the elite men's class, wow. which was absolutely amazing, and then. Um, then the week after that, I had a race in uh, Holland, mm -hmm. and I, I was able to make my first ever uh, World Cup main event as well, which wow. was awesome. Wow, yeah. amazing! Yeah. Tell me about number seventy-seven. That's your race number. Yes. That obviously is very special to you. Yeah. How so, did that come about? Well, it came about because one of my heroes at the time called Robert DeWeldy mm -hmm. and but he had the number at the time so I couldn't take mm -hmm. it but I thought it became available but someone else took oh, it. They pipped you. Yeah so I was like what the hell <laughs> <laughs> but finally um, a few years later um, it became available again and that's when I took you it. So, got it. So number 77 was mine. And that's very special to you to have that, your definitely, career. Definitely, yep. yeah. And and I remember when I told you about uh, 2017 mm -hmm. where I won the nationals for the first time and I won the, uh, uh, made the world championships. Yes. Um, that was all on the new number as well. Oh, so, so the new number's got a bit of luck. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Wow. So tell me what your favourite part of training was back in 2017 when you were um, at the top of your game. I reckon my favourite part was gym. Gym? Just going to the... So I went two to three times in a week mm -hmm. 
and I'll either train, I'll, I'll train both upper and lower body on mm -hmm. both days, but in different ways, if that makes sense. It does, yeah. Um, and it's just, I don't know, I just, I just enjoyed it because I can feel myself getting stronger. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I, 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 I would say that that would, I would say that that's what I like the most. Mm -hmm. And what about the, the worst, the worst type of training, uh -huh. things that you wake up in the morning and go, oh God, do I have to do that? Um, sprints, mm -hmm. but it's over 120 meters. It's just full gas. Yeah. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds hard. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> and what, what did you used to do for looking after yourself? Like looking after your muscles, looking after your body? Well, what was important? Everything, everything really. But obviously stretching um, and if I have an injury or something upcoming I make sure I get that part of my body locked at mm -hmm. um, because if you don't it's just it's just I don't know it's just delays getting yeah back to train. exactly yeah. yeah so that's what I really like to look look after yeah. yeah and tell me about did you have a strict diet that you had to follow or a certain nutrition regime yes when I was like in year maybe 10, I mm -hmm. reckon. I, I went to Japan and and I met this guy who is really my hero until now mm -hmm. and he wasn't eating any sugary food. Okay. Any sugary foods. So I went, all right, that's it. <laughs> You've I'm, got to quit sugar. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I don't think that really helps. Okay. So I'm big, back eating some sugar now, okay. but I thought that was really funny. Yeah. yeah. What's like a, a, a favorite thing that you loved, but you thought, oh, I, can't, I shouldn't really have this because I'm training or? Pavlova. Pavlova. <laughs> I reckon it is Pavlova. <laughs> well, now you can eat as much. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so tell me, Kai, the accident that you had, it was the 8th of February? That's right, 20, 2020. 2020. Yeah. Do you remember anything at all from that day? No. No memory. So, we had a race um, the week before uh, at Shepparton. That day I don't really remember, or this that week, mm -hmm. or the next week in Bathurst, I don't really remember either. And then, then a, a lot of stuff happened, and then I woke up and it was, it was all different. Yeah. But but I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know what happened. Yeah. So people would have told you what happened to you. Are you able to sort of describe what happened? Uh, yep, so it was the fourth round of the uh, Supercross BMX World Cup. Um, and I was coming in really, really strong and I didn't have the best weekend of racing the week before. So I, re I was really keen to uh, get myself up there for this one. Um, and it, it was the last race actually, and I got down the first straight in in second, and around the first corner, and down the second straight, I was able to catch up into first. And as I was coming into the second corner, my front wheel just washed out, and that was it. And I don't remember anything else. Yeah. Such such a difficult day for you and your family and, and everybody. It's not fine. There. It's for me. It's fine, but <laughs> yeah, but definitely, definitely, yeah. So you were in a coma for eight weeks. Is yeah. that correct? I think seven. Seven weeks. Yeah, but I don't remember anything. Yeah. Can you tell me your your earliest memory after that time when you were in a coma in the hospital? I remember my dad pushing me out of the hospital and me looking out and. Um, it said Liverpool Hospital and Liverpool Brain Injury Unit. And I was like, wow, this is my home for the next, however long it's gonna take. And I, and I thought that was really weird and also scary, scary. at the same time. Absolutely. Yeah. And not only did things change for you, but things changed for the world. Mm. The, the world was so different. I know, I know. I know, yeah. That must have been 
hard to understand. Maybe, yeah. I, to be honest, because I'm still getting myself sorted. So I was like, I don't really know what, I, like, is this how the world was? Mm -hmm. Or is this like a, a new world that I've woken up to? I, I wasn't sure. Yeah. 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 And people were wearing masks. Yeah, I know, and... I know. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. yeah. So tell me how how hard it's been for you learning to 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 walk, to talk, to move your arms. Well, to be honest, I couldn't do anything. When mm -hmm. I first got to Liverpool Hospital, I couldn't do anything. So I could point to a sign that says yes and no, and I, and that's how I communicated with everyone. So mm -hmm. do you need to go to the toilet? Yes, mm -hmm. no. You need to do too. Yes, no, like, it, it's just, it just took so long. But honestly, that was the first few weeks. But then at the end of April, I managed to stand up. And, and I what was, was that day like? I was like, well, okay, now we're talking. So okay. what, can I, what can I get done from here? Like, because yep. until then, I didn't even know if I could even stand up or not. But because I, but when I stood up for the first time, I was like, okay, now I've standing up. So what else can I do with the muscles that I can still move? And that's when I started going. Like you thought, you thought, I've, I've got this. Yeah, and then I, and I just started going up, really, mm -hmm. and that's it, really. And what did you think? You th if I can stand up, I can do anything. anything. Is that what you thought? I think so. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, with my BMX, I started to realise about halfway through the year that it's not going to be the same as it was before. Okay. And that was r really hard. Can you tell me about that? It was hard because you knew that you wouldn't be able to ride your bike like you used to? Mm. Yeah. I knew how much I was going to miss it, and that was really hard, yeah. yeah. And who helped you sort of process that? Was it Saya? Was it your mum and dad? Was it yeah. your coach? I think it was all of them. Yeah. Um, my coach came in on uh, every month, while he could, he came on in on every Monday to chat about things and stuff, which was really cool. It was good because it's not like, it's like, not like I was in a different country. Mm -hmm. and at least I was still in Australia, that which is, is really excellent. good. So did you set yourself, so you stood up, did you think I'm gonna set myself goals or did you have milestones that you wanted to work towards? Once I stood up once, that's when I realized okay where can i go from here because before that i i didn't know if i was going to be like wheelchair for the rest mm -hmm. of my life for example yeah but but it that wasn't the case which was really good so. and tell me what you wanted to tick off like did you have certain things that you thought i want to be able to do this or i want to be able to jump or i want to be able, like did you have things that you worked through? Yeah, and, and they're still there in the list. Sure. Um, some of them have been crossed off. Fantastic. Tell me about when the first time you got back on your bike. It was crazy because it was a whole year after I crashed and thought I couldn't ride anymore that I got up and started to ride my bike, which was really cool. So that's when, I don't know, like it was just another step in the process sure. really. And, I just, I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. Mm. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Tell me what it was like being able to go back in the gym. I know how much you loved the gym before your accident. Yeah. So I think it was around uh, November of that year that I started going back to the mm -hmm. gym. And to be honest, it was horrible to start off with because all these things that I've been able to do is kind of gone really and I have to start from zero again. For example, the squats, squats I just stood, stood in the machine and went down and went up and that's it. But slowly that all started to shift and now I think I can squat 108 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> so, it's amazing. Yeah, so that was really good, and now I just need to keep getting better, really, yep. really, because yep. there's nothing stopping you. Uh -oh. 
Absolutely. I yeah. love your attitude. <laughs> Let's talk about Tokyo and the Olympics. Okay. At the start of last year, the Olympics were postponed um, at, to this year. Mm -hmm. So I started to think, oh, maybe I can go and watch my sister race. It was just crazy because that actually did end up happening. Mm -hmm. um, although my sister um, didn't get the result that she wanted because um, a rider messed up around her, I thought she still did really, really 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 well she and, did. and I just want I just can't wait for you for her to try again mm -hmm. what was it like being in Tokyo it must have been such a special time to yeah be it with really your was it, yeah it really was and also um, I usually go every year and I couldn't go in 2020 mm -hmm. but it was awesome because I had some some people like my BMX school friends. I didn't lose them because I made an injury of myself or anything. They, I they supported you. Exactly, and that, that was amazing. Yeah. yeah. And what was it like to watch Saya at the Olympics? Were you nervous? Yes. <laughs> That's probably the most nervous I've ever been. Really? Oh, yeah, because usually I, I don't get nervous at all. But this year, because I wasn't racing and I was just watching, I don't know, I, I just, I, I don't know how to describe it. But too many, too much nerves. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I, I thought she did really well. Um, it's just the, uh, the third race of the semi-final, she just came unstuck. Yeah. But, and how scary was that for you and for your mum? I think it was really scary because we, because she didn't have a phone, well, obviously didn't have a phone or, no, yes. or anything, so we, we had no idea what she was feeling or thinking or mm -hmm. if she was even alive or anything. Mm -hmm. but, but um, I think it was after the, both the finals had been, had gone by, she managed to call us and talk to us and tell us that she was all okay and that was all that I needed, really. Yeah. Tell me when you were, you were a kid, you had a dream about going to the Olympics. Okay. I was happy and sad at the same time. I was really happy for my family and Saya because she gets to go to the Olympics yeah. and that's awesome. <laughs> but I was I, really upset for me as well because I can't, I, I couldn't go. I, I, I just, I just couldn't go. That's hard. It was hard, yeah. But something else special happened for you at the Olympics, which was really cool for you and your family and you got to be part of the, the Paralympics. Yeah. That's pretty special. That is very special, yeah. So I think it was the city that I used to live in, in Japan, called Fuchu City, mm -hmm. that organized it all. Um, and pretty much, I don't know, I just, I can't remember how it happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, it happened. <laughs> yeah. And I was able to carry the torch over maybe 50 meters, yep. which was amazing amazing and it was a really really special moment yeah so Kai you're well into your rehab journey now you're, you're up and about you're walking you've been back on your bike you've done so many amazing things do you enjoy being back at the gym definitely yeah so that's about 30 minutes away from my house so that's mm -hmm. really good um, OT was awesome because now I can move my arm and stuff like that and bend it and straighten it and stuff, which is really good. Which has been, that's been a big part of the, the recovery for you. Definitely, yeah, because you should have seen it. I, I probably could show you, but <laughs> I, like, I, I, I had nothing. Yeah. Like, I, I could maybe close it, but, mm -hmm. like, not open it and mm -hmm. stuff. But, 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 yeah, so... That was really good. And yeah. what parts do you not like when you're 
doing your rehab. Stretching. <laughs> stretching. I don't think a lot of people like stretching. <laughs> I don't know anyone that does really. <laughs> so what? Tell me, do you have? To, are you doing something every day? Talk me through your week. Go to the gym twice, mm -hmm. and then I ride my bike once. Oh, wahoo! Wah the kick on Zwift. That's right. Yeah. So I ride that like five times, yeah. Five times a week? Yeah. Wow, um, amazing. What motivates you, Kai? You're really motivational, you're very positive. Am I? I think you are. Where, where do you get your motivation from? At the start, I didn't have any motivation because I didn't know what I can do. I didn't know what I should be expecting to do. I didn't know how to spell. Like, it was, it, it was pretty tough. But I think I just keep going back to it, but that first step, and I, and I thought, oh, wow, like, this is what I can do after a month of doing this stuff. Mm -hmm. What else can I do after a year, after two years, three years? So I think that's just what I am at the moment is I'm just competitive and I just, want to see how far I can go. I think that's what it is. And never quit. Exactly, yeah. So Kai, what does the future look like for you? My future is for me to be competitive in something, whether that's um, on the road, on the track, um, or maybe even uh, Paralympics. Wow. Not sure, but I'm just, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just looking forward to people telling me which way I can go, really. <laughs> the world is your oyster. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But I, I, I have a sense and a feeling that you're going to push yourself as far as you can go. I think so, yeah. I, I think you would be wrong if you said anything else. Yeah. <laughs>「I'm able to walk down the beach with you which is incredible yeah. did you think that that was gonna happen no well I honestly there was a, a part of the year last year that am I am I going to walk again mm -hmm. I'm not sure but now I'm able to walk and that's one thing ticked off the list <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and tell me you've had some really important people that have helped you and been alongside mm -hmm. you throughout your recovery process. Yeah. Who, who are the, those important people to you? Um, first of all, it's my sister, Saya, um, my mum, Yuki, and my dad, Martin, that have been there every step of the way, which is absolutely awesome. Coaches, Troy Fisher, Wade Boots, I can't believe they stuck with me for all this time, so that was really special. Mm -hmm. Kai, tell me about Saya and what does she mean to you? And every time I say her name, your face lights <laughs> up. <laughs> um, I don't think she meant as much to me until last year where she, she didn't know what was going on. Um, she could have lost me. Mm -hmm. And that was a whole family as well. But, but she decided to stick through me. and She's very special to you and you're very special to her. I think so, yeah. <laughs> well, definitely one way. I'm not sure about the other. <laughs> Kai, thank you so much for having a conversation with me today on The Backstory. I've really loved chatting with you and getting to know you a little bit more. Thank you, thank you. I've got a little something for you. Okay, what is it? It's oh, my card. perfect. <laughs> Beautiful, thank you so much. This will go straight to the pool room at my house. Yay. <laughs> thank you, Kai. Kai continues to go from strength to strength. He has recently travelled overseas, he's been an underwear model and an ambassador for the tour down under, and more importantly is making improvements in his recovery and rehab every session. I know Kai has some big goals for the future and I have no doubt he will succeed in whatever he does. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode of The Backstory. Thanks to our friends at P3 Recovery for their support.
Welcome to P3 Recovery Centre, a state-of-the-art recovery and wellbeing facility right here in the heart of Burley on the Gold Coast. Come with me, I'll take you for a tour.